and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got one of these editions where Mark has sent me a puzzle to open live on camera, which normally means we're in for something weird. Um, and um, in fact, well, I'll tell you what the message said that Mark, Mark emailed me about this puzzle. He said it dusted him up good and proper, <laughs> which I think is slightly northern slang um, for uh, he had a great deal of difficulty solving it. So why don't I actually just copy and paste this in here and we can have a look at what he's got. This looks remarkably normal. OK, what's going on here? Quantum Safe Sudoku by Chameleon. I don't recognize the name Chameleon. Um, let me just read the rules quickly. Oh, Schrodinger cells. I've just seen. Oh, OK, right. So there's something strange going on here. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by a black dot must contain digits in a ratio of one to two, i.e. one digit must be double the other. Cells separated by a white dot must contain consecutive digits. Not all possible dots are given. So, so far, it's completely standard. Now, this is where it gets weird. It says cages are Schrodinger cells, i.e. they contain one of two values. <laughs> After filling all regular cells with digits, all Schrodinger cells must remain unresolved. In other words, both values of every Schrodinger cell must lead to a valid Sudoku solution. The quantum balance of the universe is safe with this Sudoku. Cats are safe too. Okay, so a reference there to Schrodinger's cat, of course. Hang on. So after filling it all regular cells with digits, all Schrodinger cells must remain unresolved. In other words, both values of every Schrodinger cell must lead to a... Oh my goodness me. Right. I, ah, that sounds mad. So basically, we're not meant to solve this Sudoku at all. It's to correctly solve what you can here. You're going to be left with... Are you going to be left with just two solutions? Oh, good grief. I've got no idea. After filling in all regular cells, must remain, in other words, both values of every Schrodinger cell must lead to a valid Sudoku solution. Wow. So there's some sort of massive deadly pattern in this, by, by which I mean, um, let me just try and explain what I think is going on here. So imagine we did this puzzle. Forget forget everything in this puzzle, all of the graphic graphical accoutrement. And let us look at that domino. Let's imagine that was a one-two pair, and let's imagine that was a one-two pair. Now, if we did fill in every other digit in this puzzle, apart from this domino and this domino, this puzzle would not have a unique solution because let me explain why that's the case if you can't see it. The reason is that there is no way to know whether the solution has double one in oops, double one in those cells and double two in these cells, or whether the solution has double two in these cells and double one in these cells. Literally, there is no way of telling because the, the puzzle's internal logic does not distinguish between those two things. And you can see that for yourself by thinking about it. So what would determine whether this is a one or a two in this puzzle? Well, nothing in row or column four is going to tell us that because the only way of distinguishing between these digits is, is with a one or a two in, in this column. We can't tell by reference to the row and we can't tell by reference to the box. So there is nothing about the puzzle that tells us which way around these goes. So that would mean if we did have a puzzle that ended with this pattern, that puzzle would have two solutions. So in this puzzle, what we've got to do is to fill in the cage cells such that we have, that is mad. I mean, it's actually, it's incredibly interesting as well. We've never had a puzzle on the, on, the, on the channel before where you're not meant to solve the puzzle. So that's quite cool. Um, the thing I'm slightly perturbed about is I haven't really got a clue how to go about doing this. 
because it's not something I have to do very often. I'm meant to solve them normally. Um, right, but anyway, anyway, let me um, thank you, Mark, for that. I think, um, and uh, we shall. <laughs> I've got I've got some announcements. Let's do some quick announcements. Firstly, yesterday we released Duality over on Patreon, which is our October monthly reward. The feedback has been overwhelming. We have had about a thousand correct entries for the intermediate part of that, which is to solve the first four of the 14 puzzles. Absolutely brilliant solving by so many of you. Really well done. And um, we have to give massive plaudits here to the Sudoku Skunk Works who created the pack because every email we're getting is saying, wow, these skunks know what they're doing, basically. So that is brilliant. Now, I can tell you somewhat incredibly, uh, about 20 of you finished all 14 puzzles already, which is amazing. And the fastest solver, Gonzalo Garcia, was done in a shade under four hours. So now I know Gonzalo is an absolutely prodigiously quick solver because um, he often comments on my videos to say, you know, oh, it took me three minutes or something. Um, anyway, the following, very well done to you. Go Gonzalo Garcia, obviously. Jonathan J.H. Harsh, who is always very fast. Uh, Frank Levinson, Fabian Volman, Adam Jaziri, Anthony Anderson, Ferdinand Stam, Surab Das, Nicholas Ohl, Nathan Gilbert, Kelvin Graham, Leon Zhang, Jay Dyer, uh, Wesley Spikes, Amber Dot, Grufty, Brett Gator, and Carl Casadia, I think. And that's the actually, I've read that out in the order that we received the entries. So, um, I mean, it's just stunning. Well done to all of you. Fabulous, fabulous work. And if you haven't, if you're a patron, and you haven't had a, had a go, do check it out. Honestly, the love these puzzles are getting is amazing. Um, and if you're not a patron, please consider becoming a patron and joining the best Sudoku club on earth. Um, now, what else do I need to say? We're streaming tonight, 10 o'clock UK time. We'd love to have your company for that, doing some Sudokus from our free app. And I want to say it's a couple of birthdays. Well, actually, actually, well, two birthdays to twins, Emily and Elizabeth, who turned 21 today. That's fantastic. Um, your father, Jeremy, wrote to us. Um, and uh, Emily and Elizabeth, I hope you have an absolutely brilliant day. I also hope a brilliant day is had by Isaac and Shoshi. I hope I'm saying your name. It might be Shoshi, actually. Isaac and Shoshi, um, who, believe it or not, are getting married today which is rather wonderful. And apparently Isaac was all for having our theme music as the uh, the music to which uh, Shoshi would walk down the aisle. <laughs> I don't know if that happened or not, but Isaac, all credit to you if you managed to make that happen. Um, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope there's a video. Um, anyway, obviously we hope you have a fabulous wedding day and um, yeah, a lot of joy. Brilliant. Um, that's all, that's all, right. That's my, that's my list of things done. I'm anxious to try Quantum Safe Sudoku by Chameleon. Possibly one of the most original ideas we've ever seen on the channel. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking, or let's get semi-cracking at least. Um, let's try and make some progress with the puzzle. I mean, actually it's incredible. It's actually incredible that there's, because what have we got here? We've got a few dots. We've got six white dots, two black dots. And obviously the cage sells, but that, that's really amazing that that can lead to whatever you call the result of this puzzle. It's not really a solution, is it? Um, so somehow we've got to find a way of labeling these cells because I mean I can see that in that row for example and in th this row so we've got to set up deadly patterns in this row let's imagine they were a one two pair So then what would we be saying? We'd be saying that every other, we'd say, be saying three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are determined in this row. One and two are not determined. So one, in order for that to be valid, 
one and two have to be not determined as well. Oh, this is horrible. This is this is really difficult because I was going to say that one and two are not because they can't be determined. If there was a one here, if there was a real one there, that's then determined. So somehow there has to be ambiguity in all of these cells. Ooh, I don't think that's where you start. That feels that feels very hard to understand how the ambiguity is going to filter through all of these Schrodinger cells. Ah, okay, we've got a black dot with only two shaded cells in the column, or two 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 uh, Schrodinger cells. I'm not even sure I understand what that means. So what if that was one two? Is that is that possible or not possible? It feels like it's possible. But then and then this would be ambiguous in the column, which is totally fair. But then in the rows, there couldn't be ones and twos again. But again, that's the, I don't really understand how I'm going to get a handle on this at all. Ah, okay, well there's there is a little pattern there. So those two digits have to be a pair, don't they? And those two digits have to be a pair. So those two digits are those two digits the same pair, I think. Let's just try that. So if that's one two and that's one two then in order for this 1-2 to be ambiguous, that must be a 1-2. Now what are we exactly saying? So we're saying in the finished grid, we wouldn't know whether this was 1 or 2. If it was 1, that would be 2 and that would be 1. So these, these are the same. So that's got to be 1 or 2 because that's the only instance of one or two in its row. And I'm obviously these, <laughs> it would be quite funny if it did turn out that these were all ones and twos, but there is no reason to suggest they're going to be ones and twos. So let me think about this. So now what we'd be saying is that this, so this arrangement here, Now what's going on with these two? This might be the key because we've got a black dot relationship between these two cells. So, but this has to be left ambiguous by whatever I put here. So this, I mean, obviously this can't be a one, two pair. But even if this was a 2-4 pair, that's still broken the puzzle because now this is determined. If this was a 2-4 pair, this would be a 1. And then, then all of these would become determined as well. So we wouldn't have achieved the objective of leaving these cells ambiguous in the finished grid. So, so in fact, neither of these cells can be limited in its options to 1 and 2. So, for example, if that was 1, 2 and that was 4, we've broken the puzzle for obvious reasons, because this 1, 2 gets determined, that determines this, which is not allowed. So, but surely one of... Yeah, I think I'm getting confused here, because what I'm trying to do is to do this using 1s and 2s, and that's I'm trying to think about 1s and 2s in the context of the black dot, and that's not a good idea, is it? So we may have to go to algebra here, or color. Um, mm, don't know which is best. Maybe, maybe algebra with this puzzle. Because I'm thinking, like, if I label these with A and B, all of those, let's make them A and B. You can do this, by the way, in the software. Um, it's remarkable software built by Sven Neumann for us. Um, so um, 
And if you want to see him building the software, he has a YouTube channel where he does the programming. So those of you interested in programming should check that out. But uh, the way to do this is to go to this, uh, click the cog icon and then enable the letter tool. I always have it enabled, as you can see. Um, but that gives you this option of toggling between digits and letters. So what I'm thinking is that these um, these cells are an AB pair and Therefore, well, these cells here have got to be from A, B, and C, I think, because, because I have to leave ambiguity here. Yeah, so there must be three options for the three unknown cells or three possible digits that go into them. But I've got to refine this further, haven't I? Because these these cells get Schrodinger'd. There's one of two options in each cell, not one of three options. So if that's, I want to go back to numbers again now, but I know that's dangerous in the context of the black dot. So if this is AB, one of these has to be AC and one of these has to be BC. I think that's how it must look, something like this. And then if you look, then if we look along the row, neither A nor B nor C is determined. And if we look in this box, neither A nor B nor C is determined. Now, if we had a, if we had a matching pair, if this was A B instead of A C, then C would be determined, and that's bad. So it's going to have to be something like this. Now that must mean, I say this with trepidation, because C is an option with a different digit in both of these cells. C cannot be a number like six or one or three, I think. Because if let's imagine that C was six for a moment. Well, the only black dot number that it could go with, because remember on a black dot, we do, we've got one number is double the other. Well, you can't put 12 in a Sudoku grid, not even in Chameleon's quantum safe Sudoku is 12 a valid digit. So the only digit that six can go with is three. So if C was six, this would have the option of being, well, both of them would have to be, it would have to be a three, six pair, wouldn't it? Because if, if, Although now I'm questioning whether I, yeah, because yeah, yes, it would be because six has to be an option in both cells. And that means three has to be an option in both cells. And that would imply that A equaled B, but if A equaled B, that cell, we'd have too many threes in this box. Yeah, this is, it would just wouldn't work. So we need to make sure that C has two options on a black dot, which means that C, I think, is two or four. Because two can go with one, or it can go with four, and four can go with two, or it can go with eight. I don't think anything else could be a valid number to go with to go with C. Now, have I made an assumption here in terms of, I'm just wondering how, how do we know this is AC rather than this is AC? No, that's, well, it's okay, I think, to do that because I could just redefine. So, it, you know, if it turned out yeah, because I've not specified any of these, this must be a valid arrangement of this row. Um, 
just by redefining A and B, I could effectively swap these pairs over because I don't know what A and B are, are yet. I could just, by relabeling this, I could always get to this configuration. So hang on though, because now if I know that C is two or four, and I believe I do, then I also know the values of A and B. Well, I've got, I've got binary options. So if, if C is two, A and B must be one and four. And if C is four, A and B must be two and eight. So this, this, these pairs are either one and four or two and eight. Which means Well, I'll tell you one thing odd that it means that makes me suspicious in the context of this puzzle. It means that we could never have, like that cell simply cannot be AB ever in this puzzle, I think. And that's because if this was AB, it's either one four, this is either saying this cell is a one four option or it's a two eight option but that's next to a white dot cell, so, which is determined. So imagine this square was a, I don't know, a five. If that's a five, that's fine. Ah, uh, no, hang on, hang on. I'm misleading you here because this cell is not, oh, this is why. Ah, uh, no, okay. I was thinking that this, I was thinking in the context of the whole grid being Schrodinger cells, but it's not the whole grid being Schrodinger cells, is it? It's only the ones that are in cages. So actually, and now I'm seeing that Chameleon's been very nasty and hardly any of the white dots are on, are, are on cages, these two are. So that one I can tell you can't be AB. Let me go back to my point now, because if this was AB and if this was five, oh, I'm losing then how could this work? Because f this is a determined digit, i.e. we are going to know it in the finished grid. Therefore, this cell should have the options of being either a consecutive digit with five, which is four or six. But because we know that the AB option is always one, four or two, eight only, you could never have AB into either of those cells. I thought that was gonna be much more powerful. Um, because I thought I was going to be able to apply it everywhere, but no, I can actually only, all I can say with certainty is that those two cells are not AB. Um, mm, so now how do, how do we extend what we've learned? We've would, it would really be rather nice trying sorry I'm trying to see where it is I'm meant to make more progress here I feel like it's going to be in these columns where if I've got AC here then in this column these two cells must introduce another letter, I think. But yeah, because if, if I can't just choose these two from A and C, or I'm going to have a repeat of A or C in the column. So let's say this was A, C, D. Then I can't have a, yeah, okay. So, so if these were from A, C, and D, let's just put that in for a second, A, C, D, then neither of these could actually be A, C, because if they were, D would be determined and that's illegal. So one of these has to be A, D, and one of them has to be C, D. Now this is absolutely horrendous, to be honest, because the same is gonna be true in this column. So this is going to be B, C, E, 
and that's going to be BCE and then this will be like BE but might not be it could be CE and then the other one will be the other one and how these relate to each other I have no idea in fact it looks even more complicated because they've got this is like a massive massive horrific matrix of nonsense I'm not right okay I'm now coming to the conclusion this might not be the correct way of doing this puzzle because I think this is about if I try and pursue this method I think it's going to become unreasonably complicated and also The other thing I've got in the back of my mind here, which slightly perturbs me, is am I going to be left with... I don't know, I even know how to explain this properly. Let's imagine this, these two were a one-two pair, like that. And these two were a three-four pair, like that. Is that what I'm going to be left with in this puzzle? Because the thing that put, that makes me question whether that could be true is the wording of the instructions. So after filling all regular digits, all Schrodinger cells must remain unresolved, where they would be in this example. In other words, both values of every Schrodinger cell must lead to a valid Sudoku solution. Well, the thing is, I could resolve, I could say, okay, well, let's make this a one. But that wouldn't lead to a valid Sudoku solution because this wouldn't be resolved. So probably that's wrong, is what I'm thinking. And literally, when you choose one here, it should cascade everywhere through the grid. But that's that's an amazing thing because that's going to mean there's so much codependence between everything. Uh, you know, there's going to be basically a map going through these Schrodinger cells. That's. Um... It's not the fact that I can't put A, B on either of those, is it? Is there something like A, but I can, I could have A, B in this column. Yeah, it's so weird to do Sudoku with this because like, I'm thinking, oh, A, B, I can knock A and B out of those cells, but I can't at all because this is an option for this cell. So it's absolutely fine to have another cell up here that's A, B. What you couldn't have is say A, B here and then A, B again there. That really wouldn't work. You can't have three cells in the column that are A, B, but you can absolutely have two. And in fact, in fact, you need to have two. Well, mm, no, that's not true. That's not true. You don't have to have like an A, B here. Whoa. <laughs> but what you do have to have is something like, I don't know how to do this, uh, AC, AD, I don't know, you have to have some way of determining them, I don't know what that's going to be, BD or something, BC, no, because that would determine D, oh, okay, so if you've got four unknowns in a column, like four Schrodinger cells, maybe they do have to pair up, so maybe one of these does have to be A, B. And in that way, it's different from when you've got three Schrodinger cells in a column. Because where you've got three Schrodinger cells in a column, you can't make them pair up. But there are only three options for how to arrange three pairs of digits from three digits. You know, you can only pair them up three different ways. But where you've got four different numbers in a column and there must be four different numbers in this column that are unspecified because these four digits are going to be different numbers 
So where you've got four different numbers, let's call them A, B, C, and D, then A can go with B, C, or D, so the three options. B can go with C or D, two more, and C can go with D, which is another option. So there are six different ways of potentially organizing those four digits in pairs. And yet you, I don't think, my gut reaction is saying that you can't, you can't then arrange those four, those four digits with the two options in each cell, you know, in a way where you've sort of got a, where, where I'm trying to do what I've done here, you know, when I've got A, C, A, B, A, D, and then a, another one to disambiguate the column, because I'm always going to have an odd digit out, which does, this, I sort of feel, and this is, I, I'm not sure it's stronger than a feeling, I'm not sure I can rely on it, that one of these, well, given this is A, B, one of these has to be A, B, is what I think is probably true. So, hmm. <laughs> oh dear. But hang on, hang on, hang on. Well, if that's true, and I'm not sure it is, I can tell you that one I don't think can be A, B. That's weird. That is weird, because if this is A, B, let's just, let. so let's say that A's and B's are ones and twos, which I'm gonna, I really hope they don't, they turn out to be ones and twos. But if, if they turn out to be, if this, the option for this cell is one or two, what happens if I put one in it? Well, now I don't think I can put two in this box, because that's gonna be a two, that's gonna be a two, and those two see those cells. So these would have to both be one, and that clearly doesn't work. So that's that's another peculiarity. So it, maybe it's to do with A's and B's then. So th this digit is not A or B. Oh, this is horrendous now. Okay, so, so that means this digit, Well, does it have anything in common with C is the question I'm now answering myself. And how could I know that? There's no way to know that. It could do. So, so this digit here is not, it cannot have A or B as an option because if it has, yeah, it, even, yeah, if, even if it's Yeah, it can't actually. That's the, that's another weird way of thinking about it. Imagine A's and B's are ones and twos, but this cell has the option of being at one or three. And then this cell would be determined because it couldn't be one. Because if it was one, you couldn't put two down here again. In other words, we could write three in here and that would break the Schrodinger nature of this cell. So it's not it's not only that this can't be a it can't be an A B pair. It's it's stronger than that. It can't have A or B as an option in it. So actually this I see this is where it's going to get horrible though. So what I think we have to do here is to go sort of D E because and the problem well, not the problem, a problem with this notation now is going to come to light because I have no clue whether C could, C could be equal to D or C could be equal to E. So I've introduced, right, we started with A's and B's. C is a valid extra digit. D and E are definitely different from A and B, but may not be different from C. And I think that we're going to continue on this merry, merry, merry path of madness for some time. But, okay, but in this column now, I know what the four unknown digits are. Okay, so that's, that is something. Those cells have got to be A, B, A, B, D, or E. And... 
Okay, my hypothesis about there having to be an AB in this column is still is still val well, still at least theoretically prob possible. So then, presumably, so these digits are selected from D, E, and A, N, other. But in each case, the A, N, other must have at least some bearing on these digits, mustn't it? Yeah, it must. Oh, this is horrific. This is so complicated. Right. <laughs> He's such a so-and-so. He really is. Because these puzzles that he sends me to do, they're never sort of 10-minute puzzles. They're always absolutely monstrous. So what I'm thinking now, and this could be complete and utter gib gibberish, is that, well, this digit here cannot be BC because that would mean that this digit was determined. But it can't be totally new digits that are not B or C because if, if this was say XY and this was BC, then this column is never determinable because there are four unknowns in the column, four unknown digits. We're claiming there are four unknown digits, but there are only three cells unknown. So one of those four unknown digits would be determined and the puzzle would be broken because there wouldn't be Schrodinger cells for these three cells. So actually this digit here must have something in common with a B or a C. But then, but then C could be the same as D or E. Oh, good grief. Um, and it might be, I mean, it might be that some of you can see that C and D and E are all different. But I have to say, I, I know B is different from D and E because we've worked out that that's how we got to this digit being D and E, is that it couldn't be an A or a B. So B, so B is different. So if, right, so if this digit here has B as it, so it's got to either be a B with a D or an E or a C with a D or an E. Now, if it was B with a D or an E, let's just put that in. I don't know, obviously it could be, it could be, if we, if we say there's a B in this cell, it could be with an E or it could be with a D. I don't know which, but I'm just going to say B with D so I can think about it. Well, if that was true, then this digit, then the three digits in this box are B, D and E. So that digit needs to be... <laughs> no, please. Please let it need to be B. That's so funny. That's so funny. So that digit needs to be B. <laughs> because it is actually a B or an E. Oh, but this is broken now. Hang on, what's going on in this column? Ah! I've now got four unknowns in this column. A, C, B and E. So now, if, if this was true, we know A and B are different. I know E and B are different. Yes, I do know that. So that would mean that I know A and B are different. I don't know whether I do know that A and E are different as well. So that would mean C would have to equal E. That's interesting. C would have to equal E. Yeah, okay, so what's wrong with that? So if I marry up B, if I say that the option for this cell is B with D, or B or B with E, it's still, the, it's still the same point, that just becomes B with D. 
and that's b if this is b with d it still bears nothing no relationship with a with c so in order to not have four unknowns in this column i have to equate e and c together so that just allows me to do this doesn't it so that just allows me to do that Well, that doesn't work. Wow, okay, well this is, this is definitely interesting. It's completely and utterly mental. But how do, what, what am I gonna put in that cell if we're going down this line of madness? Now the answer, I think, in order for, to make these three digits ambiguous is a b but i can't put a b up there because it's on a white dot and if an a b according to what we said earlier could never be on a white dot in a schrodinger cell so this is wrong now if so it's not possible for E and C to be the same digit, which basically blows out of the water. So let's let's back up. Let's back up. Let's back up to. Let's back up to here. I just want to double check the logic is symmetrical. If this was B E and that was B D, I'd still have four unknowns in this column unless D was the same as C, and if D is the same as C then I get A, D, B, D, and that needs to be A, B again. So it is totally symmetrical. Now, what would happen though, if rather than, see, I started this, this chain of thought by thinking about how these two cells interacted, noting that there must be something in common between this, this optionality and this cell's optionality. But what would happen if, it was this cell and this cell instead. I th it feels like it's going to be a symmetrical result, doesn't it? Let's just let's just convince ourselves that's true. So this cell needs to either have an A or a C in it. So if it had an A in it, that would have this cell would either be AD or AE, and that cell would be AE then, in order to preserve ambiguity amongst these three digits. Now, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It works the same way. So this and this have to be, these are all different digits now, A, B, C, and E, unless we equate two to each other. Now we know A and B are different, so we can't equate those. We know A and C are different because we've, that's how we defined these, this box down here. Now, we know that E and B are different because of this relationship here. If E was equal to B, then we'd break the Schrodinger rules around here. We get the same digit down there. So the only way this can work is if E and C are the same. And if E and C are the same, you're going to run in to a problem with the need because that would make this BE and that would be AB. And we know that we can't put A. This is all to do with this weird domino up here with the white dots. It's, well, when I say, <laughs> no, that is a ludicrous thing for me to say. It is not all to do, well, it's a bit to do with that at this point. I am fairly convinced by now, I have to tell you, that there is a simple way of doing this. And this is not it. This is not it. This is weird and wonderful and totally and utterly insane. Um, after 44 minutes, I can, I can guarantee you that. Now, but this is great because we have, well, when I say great, I mean in the loosest possible way, it is mildly advancing because now what I've worked out is that when we consider what the shared option is between this cell and this cell, or indeed this cell and this cell, it is C. There must be a C in both of these cells. So that means that this cell is a, has got a C as an option, and that means it's C, D, and E that are the three 
three unknown digits in this box. Now, the problem with that is do we know whether this is CD or CE? And the answer is, I don't think we do. Ah, ah. Ah, but I don't care, do I? No. So just as I can specify A and B so that the bottom row works, because, because I know both of these cells need to have a C in them, so one C, D, one C, E, just by defining D and E, so say, you know, D and E were, I don't know, two and four or something, and I made this one C, D, and I made this one C, um, C, E, then I can just, just by redefining D and E, so if I, if I started off with, you know, oh, D being two and E being four, and that turned out to be the wrong way round, I could just relabel them so that this, this nomenclature would still be valid. So we do know that this has to be a CE. We do know that this is, has to be a CD. We just don't know at the moment what D and E are or in which order they go here. So, but this is okay, because now in this column, look, we've got A's, C's, and E's, which means that cell, to, be, to make this column ambiguous, has got to be AE, I think. And this cell, to make this column ambiguous, has got to be BD. So I've got an AE, and I've got a BD. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> this is absolutely perplexing. <laughs> um, I don't understand. I've got A, B, D, E down here. Is there some way that I'm meant to know If my hypothesis is right, I don't think it is right now. I thought I could pr I could say that one of these had to be A, B. But the problem with that is that that breaks in this box, doesn't it? Because if one of these is A, B. Well, if one of these is A, B, the other one is D, E. And I don't know, I'm just feeling like, how is, is it really still internally ambiguous between those four things? It, it might be. I just can't visualise it, I'm sorry. Um, and it's not the outcome I expected when I was thinking about this before. A, B and D, E. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely self-contradictory because... If this can be A, B, and D, E, then the corollary of that is that with this being A, B, and D, E, this could have been A, E, and B, D, and that would have somehow worked. So, yeah, I think what I was saying before was wrong. So... So is it the white dots here? The problem is I don't know what E and D are. They go in that cell. A. Ah, I know what it'll be. It'll be parity, won't it? Actually, that is quite an interesting thought. I strongly suspect now uh, or do I? Because A and B were either one and four or two and eight. 
and they're in different boxes here. Now, I'm just thinking that if if this was, let's just say a is two and b is eight for the sake of argument. Well, those are both even numbers. Now, whatever we put in these cells have to leave optionality in B, D and A, E. So if these are even, then their counterpart, so yeah, if these are both even, if A and B are even, D and E must be even. Because otherwise, once you put a digit of any parity in the cell next to them across the domino that's got the white dot, this would be resolved. Let me show you what I mean. I think that's probably the best example. Let's imagine that we tried to somehow make this seven and eight. Yeah, so B was saying could be eight and let's just say D could equal seven. Well, it now does not matter what I put into this cell. The mo it's going to be determined in the finished grid and it will determine this because we know that these must have opposite parity because they're consecutive digits. So actually, this is interesting. So, so now, if, if A and B are two and eight, then E and D are four and six, because they're different from A and B, and they must have the same parity as A and B. And that means, So, well, that, that means these are odd. Let, let's, let's just go down this line. So if A and B are even, let's just make those even, blue for even, these have got to be odd. Now, A, we don't know the order. Forget the order, okay? We're gonna have to play by um, fast and loose with ambiguity here. So just say A was two. If A was two, then E, in order for this to work, E would have to be four because we need this to give both digits as an option. So if this was five, obviously it could never be next to two. And if it was five, this cell would only be four or six, neither of which is A or B. So this would have to be A, B, which it can't be. So this, if A was two, E would be four, this would be three, this would be a six eight pair which would have a seven in this square so if a if a and b are two and eight these orange digits are three are they are definitely three and seven we don't know the order but we know they're definitely three and seven no ah uh, this this is wrong this is wrong Wow, wow, okay, I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Right, this is wrong because I've got too many even digits in the puzzle now. So, let's hopefully, hopefully you're following where I'm going with this, which if you're not, I would totally not blame you because I barely know what I'm saying myself. But if, if, we are in this line where A and B are two and eight. Then, then because D and E are six and four, in order to make our white dot our, our, our white dots work, the digits A, B, D, and E in this puzzle are all of the even digits. They are two, four, six, and eight. There are only four even digits in a Sudoku. Even this Sudoku only has four even digits. But now, how does this black dot work? How does that black dot work? Because remember at the start, well, in fact, in fact, we can say if A, B is two, eight, then C is four. And that means C is four, but also we know on that and in this analysis, E is also four as well. But we know C and E are different because if C and E were the same, this digit is determined. So the whole world falls apart. And that means I think that AB is one four. Now what I have not got a good feel for 
is whether that works or not. And if this doesn't work, I'm turning the camera off because my brain my brain is already shot to pieces. Um, yeah, whatever neural networks are being built by this puzzle, I, I do not want to just destroy and tear down and then try and do it again. That is for sure. Um, right, so if if we're right, and if AB is 1, 4, then surely C is 2. Because obviously we need a digit that, that connects 1 and 4 across the black dots in, in this peculiar way that this puzzle seems to require it to do. Now, what I'm far less confident about... Well, let's just think about this up here then. So one of the digits, A or B, is 1. So that means that it must go with 3 in its, in its, in its um, counterpart digit. And there must be a 2 in one of those cells. So one of those is a 2. Because that's the only digit that is consecutive with 1. Now... The, the digit that's got B in it, or it doesn't, I'd, and again, this is totally ambiguous which way around this goes, but let's just think about the one that's got four in it. So four, well, the one that's got one in it has got three in it. Ah, hang on. Yeah, that's that's right, isn't it? I think I'm going to have to do this by just penciling in. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really starting to lose lose track of what's going on. I'm just going to argue for a moment that A is 1. If A is 1, E is 3, and this is 2. Okay, that, that I think is correct, but it could be the other way around. But th let's go with this. Now, in that situation, B we're saying is 4. Now, the consecutive digit now can't be the 3, because the 3 is at the E. So this would have to be a 5. And if it's a 5, this square must... So D would then be 6. So this would be 4, 6. This would be 1, 3. And what's that saying about this? So, so if... If we're saying B is 4, aren't we? So this is 2, 4. So this would be 2, 6. This would be 2, 6. That's it. So let's just fill these in just so that we can see what it looks like. That one is 2, 4. This one is 1, 2. It is, wor it is working, you know. It is working. Because we are getting sort of something semi-sensible down this column. So E we're saying is 3. So that's 2, 3. Ah, oh, this is... Ah, oh, I've done it. <laughs> this is absolutely brilliant. It is completely and utterly mad. But it is absolutely brilliant. Okay, well, I can now tell you. I now, I now know the order of this column. When I say that, I've got it wrong, but of course, this this is broken. I've got two twos now in this column. Because by making this one three, I get a two here. But I know one of these is a two because it's got to be C, and C is two. So this doesn't work, and that means that cell has to be the five. And if that's the five, this has to be the four or the six. So everything here needs to switch round into the other direction. So let's try and do this slowly. So right, so this becomes not one three, this becomes four six, this becomes not four six, this becomes one three. Now that means these two need to switch round. So this one becomes two four, this one becomes one two. Now that one becomes two three, look. And this one becomes 2, 6. And D and E are now uh, 3 
and six. So this is three, it's working. Three, this is three and six, and that's what you'd expect it to be looking at these two cells. This is a two. I've actually got two digits now, which is quite unbelievable. And A, B, we know is one, four. So this is one, four. This is one, four. This is one, four. This is one, four. That's working along the bottom. Look, we've got a one, two, four triple. Now, well, I could almost get rid of my A. Is this, is this madness what I'm about to suggest here? It might not be. Do I need now my labelings anymore? My A's and B's and C's and D's, etc. Can't I just replace these cells have got to be from one, four, three and six. They are the four unknowns in this column. So they're one, four, one, four, three, <laughs> six. So I don't think I do need D and E anymore. Oh, it won't let me get, hang on. Let's try and get rid of them. So this is three, six. Everything here is now one, four. This is now just one, two. This is plain old two, four. This is plain old two, six. This is plain old two, three. This is plain old four, six. And this is plain old one, three. And look at that. That looks a bit easier to sort of scan, doesn't it? Ah, okay. So this row has now got four unknowns in it. One, three, four, and six. So they're one, three, four and six ah can we get rid of what are these different or are they the same they uh whatever that is oh they're the same <laughs> of course they're the same um and that means i can't get rid of one and four from here bother um i've got a digit now on this black dot Hang on, what's going on in this column? I've only got two two unknowns in this column. Right, so this digit is from one, three, four, and six. Because if it wasn't if this was a two, say, obviously this is then determined, it's known because so this in order to be ambiguous, this is a pair of unknown digits. Right. So this is three six. Sorry, yeah, I'm being so slow here. This is three six because because in order to be ambiguous, these must these two cells must be selected from the same pair of digits. Well, what pair of digits from one, three, four, and six can sit across each other on a black dot? Well, the only option is three and six, so that must be a three six pair, well, oh, which gives me a three six pair here, which means this. Oh, so I was totally wrong. This is. This is a one or a four by Sudoku. I was trying to get rid of one and four into this cell. So now I've got ones and fours all over the place in the bottom row. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, this is... This is beautiful. That's a, This is a one four pair now by Sudoku of all things. I mean, there has not been, has there been, have we been doing Sudoku? That is a philosophical question. Not as I know it, that is certainly true. But look at this row now. This row has got four unknowns in it. And we know what the digits are that are unknown in this row. One, threes, it's one, everything is about one, three, four, and sixes again. But the fact that these are one, three, four, and six, means that digit is not one or four. So by Sudoku, if we look at this, these these are the two ones and the two fours in these columns. And that means we can't add any more ones and fours. Oh, in fact, that means we know what that is, I'm just seeing. No, oh, I was about to get very tickled there, but I don't think I do know what that is. But But anyway, the point is that We've got to put one and four in this column somewhere, 
and they can't go in any of those six cells. So they've got to be here, but they can't be there because this is a one, three, four, six quadruple. So that's a one, four pair. Doesn't that mean that's a one or a four? Yeah, in this row, this must have, if, if this was a three or a three, six or something, then everything would be determined because if this is a three or a six, there needs to be a three or a six in the determined cells because this is not a three or a six. So this is one or four, which means I've got a one, four pair in this column, which means that's not one or four. So this is three or six. Which means I've now got, <laughs> it's all about one, threes, fours and sixes now, because now in this row, I've got uh, four unknowns again. So these have got to be one, three, four, six. We've got a one, four pair here. So this is a three, six pair. That's a three, six. This is, a, this is just stunning. This, I tell you what, this is a one, four. Um, but let me, before I say that, let me just pontificate if I may for a moment on how mad chameleon is because this to make this requires a level of I mean it's just how do people think like this it's impossible to think like this if you if you it's just really amazing we've done a few puzzles recently where is that Stefan Bura one with with the one in the grid um, and the crazy indexing? That was another example of just I just don't understand. I just don't understand. <laughs> anyway, I think this is a one or a four because in this box there must be ambiguity, and the only way of achieving that is if this is a one four pair. Um which means those two digits are the same thing because because we've got a three six pair here and a one four pair here so whatever these are they have to be sort of you know it's like an x in fact let's we might label this up x y i think oh i tried to do that it didn't let me x y oh i don't want to do it like that i want to do it with um nice digits like that so this is x and y um Okay, what on earth do we do now? <laughs> um, I've got a horrible feeling we're going to have to do Sudoku soon. Uh, wow, nearly. Okay, I wondered about one and four in box five by Sudoku, because I've got these one, four pairs. Oh, no, not this box. What about one and four in this box? I've got a one, four pair in this column. I've got one, four pair in this row. So this is a one four pair this is slightly terrifying as well because i'm now worried that somehow this oh these are meant to be resolved that's okay that's okay they are resolved yeah because look i've got i know there's a four in one of those this is a two four six triple so that can't be another four in the column so that's one that's four and that doesn't resolve my one two three triple in column two but now yeah, so now I do Sudoku in this box. Where do ones and fours go? And they've got to go in those cells by Sudoku. Now that's on a white dot. So this is two, three, or five. It's not three by the power of Sudoku. So it's two or five. And it's meant to be resolved. So everything that's not in a cage is going to get resolved by the puzzle. So I need to be anticipating actual progress. Somehow, some way. Um, 
Right, okay. Where do 1 and 4 go in box 8? They can't go in those cells, they can't go in this, these cells, and this is a 1, 2, 4 triple, so they don't go in those cells. So those cells are 1 and 4. I almost feel like I've got all the 1s and 4s in the puzzle. Either absolutely identified or approximately identified. I think every box does have one and four optionality. So ones and fours are resolved, and that. But the fact I have to resolve this one four deadly pattern here, obviously, this is the only reason this isn't deadly is because of this Kropke dot. So somehow this crop, this cell, I think, is going to get resolved. Right. Okay. Where do three and six go in this box? Well, not there because of this three six pair, not there because of this three six pair, not here, I'm going to argue, because there is a one three four six quadruple in row two, so not there. So that, I think, is a three six pair. doesn't seem to do anything. Um, <laughs> oh dear, 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 come on. Come on, you must be able to get a bit more done here. I've got... Oh, what's going on in this row? Oh, I see. Oh, ah, right. Okay. Wow. Wow. So, look at those two cells. Now these are at the moment, well they're selected from twos, threes and sixes and we need to make sure there's ambiguity in the row. Now that means that we need a cell along here that needs to be a three or a six in a cage. Now which cell are we going to choose that to be? It can't be this one. It can't be this one. There's a three, six pair here. So I think it has to be that one. Let me just think, I'm just going to put that in. If this was anything else, you know, if this was 2, 6, obviously then this is resolved. So it can't be that. It can't be some third, fourth digit that aren't involved here. This needs to be ambiguous, which means that we cannot have in a determined cell any of these digits. So that means we need, a th we do need a 3, 6 in a cage. And I think that's the only place it can go. So that, does that mean that's x, y? I'm not sure. It does actually, doesn't it? It does. Although what's that one? That's the only sort of slight worry I've got about that. Yeah. I mean, if you look at this row now, I think this is this is reasonable. So the 236 triple is now known about. And XY needs to be ambiguous, which means that we cannot have X or Y in any uncaged cell. X and Y must be in this cell. So this is X or Y. Let me just switch back to letters and put that in. So this is X or Y. Now, what about here? If this was X and Y... Oh yeah, we need the three six in this. This yeah, this is a simple way of thinking about it. I need the three six to be ambiguous in this column. And there's only one cell left to to provide that ambiguity. So that is three six, which means this must be X Y. 
Uh, let's go back there. X, Y. Whoop. Oh, no. X, Y, like this. So now, I might probably get rid of my purple now. So now, I have almost got all the ambiguity figured out, which is sort of, it's sort of fascinating, isn't it? But there must be a way of actually doing the puzzle from here. What, right, okay, that's a three, six pair by Sudoku, I can see that. Um, not got much more than that, mind you. I'm sure there is a way to get more than that. I just don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> okay. It's got to be, well, it's, uh, ah, right, row five is where we should look, because here is an interesting question about the nature of dotage. A dot has to have an even digit on it, because it's a consecutive pair, a white dot, this is, um, and in fact, I suppose, a black dot does have to have an even digit on as well, at least one. But the but a white dot definitely has an even digit on it. Now this can't have four and it can't have six on it. And actually this white dot can't have two on it because if it did have two on it, its other digit would be a one or a three, which have both gone in the row. So the even digit on this white dot is eight, which means that the selectable digits for this white dot are is the eight has to accompany a seven or a nine to be consecutive. Um, I'd rather hope that that would do more than that, I have to tell you. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. No, okay, I don't know what to do about that. Um, we might have to... How do I resolve X and Y if it's not by reference to this white dot? Everything else is sort of not affecting X and Y. One, two, three, four, and six in this row. So the digits that X and Y are selectable from are the other digits. So this is five, seven, eight, nine. So X and Y are from five, seven, eight, and nine. Ah, no, they're not. They're not eight. Because eight, eight is looking along this row. Um, so we couldn't have eight as an option in either of those cells. So actually it's five, seven, and nine. I'm actually going to label that up, to be honest. I'm going to put five, seven, and nine into those cells. So, um, so two in this row has got to go there. This seems to be the only place I can put two. Because now I've got a, ba basically I've got a sort of five, seven, eight, nine quadruple is the way to see that. So now, ah, so now I can place two in box three by Sudoku using this two's power. So I've got a two in one of these two cells. Where is the two in this box? No, we don't know. It's in one of these two cells, I think. Where is the, oh no. Ah, still it resists. What an extraordinary puzzle this is. Imagine if I don't manage to solve it now, I will probably cry, actually. I will probably cry because this is... It's amazing. It's amazing. Where's the other three six in this row? Three and six is quite a difficult digit to place. I've got so many of them in the grid. That's not three or six. That's not three or six. Oh, that one can be, look. 
Oh, so can that one be. Okay, actually, no. Down at the bottom, it seems three and sixes are not as restricted as I was hoping. Ah, three and six in the right. Here we go. Got something. Okay, now I've got a three six pair here. Now that means in this in this box, the three and the six is in this two by two. Now, in fact, the three. Actually, I've just noticed it's even better than that because I've got a one two three triple here. So actually, the three in this box is in one of just two places. Oh no, this is right. Okay. All right, so I can do even better than that now I think about it. Because if that's a three, that cell's got to be a two or a four, and I've already got a one, two, four triple in box seven. I'm just going to double check this. So I've got three six here. They definitely can't go in those cells, therefore. I've definitely got a one, two, three triple in column two, so they can't go there. Yeah, okay, so that's not three. This is three, which gives me a three over here and a six over here. And now... Where does six go in this box? So it can't go there and it can't go there. So six is on the dot, which means it is the even digit on the dot and it must accompany five or seven. And look, I can place three in the bottom row because of this three six pair locking out of this one. I can't put it on this dot for the same reason um, it couldn't go on this dot. If it go, went on that dot, I needed to put two or four with it. If I put it there, it needs a two or a four here. So it's got to go here. And that is going to give me that digit and that digit. Which, oh, no, and that, okay. So this is a six by Sudoku using these, all of these sixes everywhere. So that's become a five or a seven, which gives me a five, six, seven triple in box seven and makes those two squares an eight nine pair I want to say which might matter he says forlornly um maybe <laughs> what's going on in this column I've got all sorts of nonsenses oh I see it's all this five seven eight nine nonsense isn't it that's what's going on in this column Good grief. Okay. So. Right. Here is here is a small point. In this box up here, I seem to have all the low digits up to and including six, which means those squares are a seven, eight, nine triple. And then I've got, look, I've got a seven, eight, nine triple in this column, therefore. So that's not seven which seems to imply using my one, two, three triple as well, that this square is five or six. And it can't be six because there's a six in that triple there. So that's five. Good grief. So that's six. And now this square is five or seven. Five is now one of my XY digits, I think, by Sudoku. So that's quite interesting, which means five must be in one of those two cells as well. So fives all of a sudden are getting interesting. Oh, I think that's been available for a while, actually. I'm just now staring at this row and noticing that because because I got this down to being eight, where did the five go in this row? It had to go in an X, Y square. So I think I think that's been available for a while. Apologies if you're being cross with me about that. Now, the seven in this column is up there, which means that's not a seven. In theory, this, this five, seven and this five, seven need to get resolved because they're not in caged cells as well. It's so strange, this. Yeah, so five, five. That's a seven, isn't it? Sorry, I have I wasn't paying attention to this digit here. So this is a five. So is this now an eight or a nine? I think it is. 
which means this is a 7, 8 or a 9. Um, now, 8s and 9s are meant to get resolved. Don't know how we're going to resolve them, but they are meant to get resolved. And... Okay. <laughs> um... What do we do now? Somebody, let me have an epiphany, please. Um, five is a bit restricted, actually. Oh, two here. Me ah, that's it. Look, I've got a two here. That's giving me that digit, which gives me this digit, which gives me this digit, this digit, and this digit. I'm winding our stuff that's been going on in those cells. So now five is in one of those two positions. Now, do I know? I do know which one, actually, because there's a five here, which means there's a five in one of these positions, which means that's a five. So again, we're down to this seven, eight, nine stuff that we've got going on in this box here, which means this is se ah, that's seven, eight, nine. Do I know more than that? I feel like I must do, but. No, I, forgive me, I don't think I do, actually. Can I do better with twos? That's the other thing I'm wondering. T oh, okay. So the two in this box is in the bottom row. So that means two in this box seems to have to overlap with my five position. So this is a two-five pair, which means, of course, the rest of the digits are seven, eight, and nine again. So this, I've got like loads of cells that have to be seven, eight, and nine everywhere. The eight in this column is down here, so that's not an eight. So this is down to seven or nine. This, yeah, this is seven, eight, or nine. It must be, what is it then that's going to resolve my sevens, eights, and nines? It must be there must be a dot somewhere or something. Is it this? Can I do better with this than I've actually managed to do? Probably. Um, or twos. That's the other thing I sort of feel I'm quite close to a breakthrough with. Or five. I realize I'm saying basically every digit. Where, what can I do with fives? Oh, nothing in these middle rows. Yes, okay, because I know one of those is a five, that's a five, isn't it? So it makes that a five and that a two, which makes this a two, this a two, which makes that a two. Aha, uh -huh. come on. Now, of course, what the, I might actually have a separate color for seven, eights, and nines. There's so many of them everywhere. These are seven, eight, and nine. Let me guess, that's seven, eight, and nine. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, right. Okay. So what is it about what we're left with here that is in any way <laughs> resolvable? It's got to be something. I don't know if I know what it is. It's pro right. I'm going to get rid of my colouring now because I think that always disturbs me, doesn't it? I almost tempted as well to shade all of the Schrodinger cells on the basis that, well, absent these ones in the middle, which are fives, sevens, or nines, they're all resolved, aren't they? So I shouldn't really, I don't think they're going to give me more information. I just have to ignore them. I'm going to make them black for a moment. I oh, know that's, that's made it worse. I'll make them yellow. I'm not sure if that hasn't made it worse, but I've got to ignore those. Um, I think it might be this dot somehow. You know, this is telling me something that I don't understand. And if I did understand it, that would be helpful. So we've got to have a seven. So there's definitely an eight in one of those two positions. Oh, 
I wish I wish I knew how this resolved. The only seven I've got in the grid is here. Oh, that's it. So that's giving me a seven here. Ah, sorry. Uh, oh, no, I was hoping that was going to actually hit a useful digit. So there's now a seven over here, which means that's not a seven. Has that done it? I think we're honing in on putting a seven in there, but I can't. Oh, that's a nine now. So this is an eight. This is a seven. Oh, it's not. There's no seven in there now. Oh, that's great, though. At least it's done. So this has become 5-9, which means that's 5-9. Oh, thank goodness. So that's 5-9, that's 5-9, that's now 8, which means this, and this can't be 9 because we've got the 5-9 pair, so that's got to be 7. And hopefully this will somehow resolve itself, um, he says, without a great deal of confidence. Yeah, there's a 5-9 pair here, so that makes that one have to be the 8 which means that's a 9, which means that's an 8, which means that's a 7, which means this is an 8, that's a 7. I've got an awkward looking 8, 9. Oh, possibility of all sorts of deadliness in the top rows, which I don't want to see. So this is a 7, 9 pair. This is not 8 anymore. There's a 7, 9 pair there, look. So that gets me some of it. That gets me this one, gets me that one, gets me that one, gets me that one, gets me that one. Gets me this one, gets me that one. Five, nine, so this is seven. This is eight, this is nine. Oh, so now, now the world is here. So have I actually done this or not? So let's see yellowify everything else. That's all the Schrodinger cells. Is everything else? I think everything else is finished. What happens when you click tick on this puzzle? Oh, no, it does not like that. Ah, but it's it's highlighted just the Schrodinger cells. So if I understand the instructions correctly, now if we just choose any digit in this puzzle, no, it can't work. I'm slightly worried about that. These fives and nines, I could resolve them. But they would they would just resolve themselves. They wouldn't they wouldn't solve the puzzle. Cages are Schrodinger cells. Either they contain one of two digits. After filling all regular cells with digits, all Schrodinger cells must remain unresolved. Well, they do. Um, in other words, both values of every Schrodinger cell must lead to a valid. Both values must lead to a valid Sudoku solution. Yeah, I think that might need another another. Well, I mean, in the, in the, I'm just concerned that I've made an error here somehow in the sense that if this was double nine and this was double five, there would still be solutions that would have to be unwound to do with all the other digits. Um, whereas if, let's say I just made that one a one, what happens there? Does everything else get resolved? Four, one, four, two, one. Four, one, three, six, four. So that becomes six, three, two, um, six, three, six, three. Yeah, look, everything else is going to get resolved. So it's literally just this five nine pair that 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 makes me question. I mean, there's, I don't think there can be another solution to this. Um, this is just a slight, a slight nagging feeling about the wording of the instructions. But I mean, let's put that to one side and just admire the mind that has come up with this, because this is crazy. This is, I mean, it's taken me hours. Well, not literally hours, nearly, nearly hours, but a long time and for that I ask I beg your forgiveness I hope you don't mind I know some of you say you love the long videos but um, I don't know I don't know I feel sometimes I take too much of your time and that is just ridiculously clever uh, I do not know 
And I don't think I'll ever know, Chameleon, how you came up with this idea and then executed it with such a plomb. These, I mean, this sort of thing is utterly terrifying. And I need to go away and make a short, sharp phone call to Mr. Cudliffe. And I'd love to see you later. And the other thing I've now decided is I'm definitely going to be opening a bottle of wine to have with the streaming tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Um, one of the most extraordinary puzzles I have ever seen. Um, and Chameleon, take a bow and then... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you need to do. But we need to plug you into something that that, that can benefit mankind. Because if you can come up with ideas like this, you are one seriously clever person. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>